Welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Murdy, and today's topic is corporate retreat. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who supported the company so far. If you've got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y, creative.co. Or you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching at murdycreative.co. It's the best of our product shots. Follow us, keep up to date with our daily photos, and be the first one to know about new product launches. You can also use the subscribe button at the bottom of our website to be included in all of our new product announcements. Be sure to check out our laser engraving, personalization options, and exclusive colors on the website, or you can get a blank one on Amazon Prime. All right, well, an update, quick update on the moving. We do officially have movers scheduled now for the 3rd of September. It's a little later than I would have liked, but frankly, it'll probably be for the best. It gives us an opportunity to get all of us as much caught up as up to date as we possibly can, get everything out the door. Uh, we're getting close. We're making good progress on that. And so we're only the only little hesitation right now is the timeline on espresso leather. We're waiting for a new batch that's supposed to be coming in sometime in the middle of this week. And we're running real low on what's in the workshop. So theoretically, that could put a hiccup in it. But otherwise, for the most part, we should be able to be all caught up. And ideally, it should mean that we won't have seriously long lead times after we get put back together at the new workshop. Also, uh, for those of you who are aware, that is the Friday before Labor Day weekend. So that actually provides me a lot of opportunities once everything's moved on Friday. Um, Either the team can help or I'll just do it over the weekend to go in and set up over the weekend. So that by that Tuesday, we're back at it and everything's good to go there. But anyway, that aside, we went on a corporate retreat this weekend. It's the first one the company's ever done formally, and I'm really glad we did it. So I was thinking about what do I want the corporate retreats to be for the company? Obviously, there should be some level of educational aspect to them, but mostly I think they should be fun. And for us, this was a great corporate retreat. I asked the gang what they wanted to do, what, what they want to do for fun. We talked about going to like Six Flags, a fun amusement park for the day. Um, we were looking at doing something that was more, uh, I, I would say, more extravagant. But then we decided that the thing everybody really wanted to do was to go to the Bristol Renaissance Fair in southern Wisconsin. And I had only been once before uh, briefly with an ex-girlfriend a long time ago. And so I was actually really excited to go back, but I didn't have an outfit. And so I was really worried about that, but they're like, no, 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 you can get an outfit while you're there. And so we went, and I mean, I'm a theater kid. I've always been a theater kid my entire life. And so I was excited. I think three out of the five people that come in on a daily basis have worked at Bristol in the past as either performers or, uh, they worked for the separate shops as, as callers, which means they sat out on the street and tried to get people to come into the shop. Um, and it was just really fun. It was a really cool time. So we got there. I said, everyone could bring a significant other. Uh, one of them took me up on it. And so I said, I was going to pay for all the drinks, all the food. And I did. And, uh, it was, and the tickets of course. And so we get in and we're walking around and they're showing me all the shops and we get into one of the shops that was the recommendation, which was called Felix's. And Felix has this, is, is this clothing shop. And they said that, you know, this is really good quality stuff. It's a little more on the expensive side, but it's going to last very, very long. And I mean, when I got in there and I was feeling the stuff, I'd be like, yeah, I guess I could, I could feel this. It was all very, it was all period appropriate, which is good because I believe Bristol is set in 1583 or maybe 84 uh, when the queen came to visit Bristol, England. And so everyone is having a good time and the queen is in town and there's jousts and everything. So I go in and I, I mean, as far as being period appropriate, I kind of had an idea in my mind of what I wanted to look like. And so. We went in and I, I didn't plan on, on spending the money I did, which was always the way it goes, I guess. But one of the things that I ended up getting was this long, I don't know the word for it. It's not a vest. It's like a tunic. It's, it's like a long tunic, but it was this beautiful, it had this beautiful kind of gold ornate. And the reason why I really got it is because my team all encouraged me to get it because it was traditionally what would have been worn by high class merchants of the time. So people who were relatively wealthy individuals who ran shops and businesses and my team's like, that's perfect. So I ended up getting it and I really had a very good time wearing it. Um, and I'm going to have to find other opportunities to wear it and we'll wear it at our D&D campaigns. And, and moreover, I think part of the reason why Bristol was so much fun for all of us is that I've actually played D&D, Dungeons and Dragons, as the dungeon master um, with, I think, Everyone that works for my, me in the company as and in a campaign a while back. And at the time, I think only two of them worked for me. So it was kind of fun for all of us. And for those of you who don't know, um, 
the dungeon master in D&D is kind of like the game maker. So Dungeons and Dragons has a general rules um, kind of surrounding what you can play as types of characters, types of things, but it's relatively broad. And the rule book surrounding Dungeons and Dragons is really designed to create, um, I guess I should say, an architecture for the world. And then you as the dungeon master can obviously warp the rules however you'd like, as long as everyone in the game agrees on it. And um, you tell a story and you just use these as kind of general rules for how the game is played. So it was really fun for me. And I'm definitely going to find opportunities to continue to dungeon master in the future and to wear this outfit every opportunity I can get because it's very cool. And we had a good time all day. I mean, we, we watched the jousts. We, we went through all of the different shops and places and we saw Mooney and all of these other kind of fun things and we had food. And what it really got me thinking about was having fun with your team. And I was thinking about all of the corporate team building games I've been to in the past and all of the little um, efforts that were put into encouraging people in my previous corporate environments to interact with each other in familial ways is what I'll say. You know, ways where you are all friends and we're all just a big family here and we're all just getting along and we're all working towards the same goals. And I realized that I hated those at my past jobs because they felt so disingenuous. They felt so contrived. Whereas I think a lot of success that we've had in this company has been related to the fact that the people who work here, we genuinely enjoy hanging out. We're all friends. We're all very good friends. And I've been very impressed with the team's ability to balance being friends and being coworkers. Because while they're all my friends, I would not say that any of them have acted in a way to abuse that friendship. They all treat me as the boss and a friend. Uh, they treat Meryl as the boss and the friend. You know, So I think a lot of that has been, uh, it's a really good culture that we've created. And it was a really fun day surrounding that culture and, and building that up and having a good interaction with everybody. And we all had a good time. And I do think when we bring on new people, it will be very critical for, for us as a core group to both be very inclusive of the new people and to bring them into the group organically and in fun ways, but also to help make that culture of we're friends and we're working together to, or towards a common goal and we help each other out and we're you know, supportive and we're encouraging but respectful of the roles and the leadership. Um, if, we can, if we can foster that with our future people, it's going to create a company that I think will be so much fun for people to go to. It'll be a joyous time to come to work because even though it'll be, there's work to do and there's things that need to be done, it'll be fun. And there's something about creating leather journals. I, I don't know if we did this on purpose or if this was just a happenstance, a coincidence of the nature of the people that work here and what we do, but the whole medieval uh, Renaissance um, Dungeons and Dragons is, is normally set in that same time period. And the fact that we make leather journals, I don't know if there's something there, but it seems like that type of style of storytelling surrounds me wherever I go, whether it be obviously to the Renaissance Fair, hanging out with my friends or making journals at work. There's this kind of uh, structure to it that has a, it's like I'm, I'm in the middle of a medieval story. And it's really fun. I've actually really enjoyed it. And I think it's a great time. So I would suggest anybody who's looking to figure out what corporate retreat you should do, A, First and foremost, I think you should ask your team because who knows what they're going to come up with. And ironically, this was not intentional, purely coincidental. It was actually a relatively cost efficient day as far as corporate retreats go. It wasn't that expensive, even though the food and the drink was exorbitantly priced. And even though the tickets were expensive, I don't think we spent that much money at all during the day. And everybody got plenty of drinks and plenty of food. It didn't feel like anybody was, you know, shortchanging themselves on my account. But I could have easily spent a lot more money doing pretty much anything else. So it was a good day. It was a fun day. And I think, frankly, I need to do those more often because we have a team that works really, really hard. And being able to say that it's not mandatory, but if you want to come on an all expense paid trip, you know, food, drink, tickets included on a weekend to come do something fun with us. Those are the kinds of things that I think really build value for our company internally. They build a culture that's fun and 
what's that worth to you, right? What's it worth to me as a business owner? And the answer is a lot. To have a team that works well together and interacts positively and has fun and treats each other with friends and, and takes care of each other and communicates effectively when there are things that are, you know, going wrong because they genuinely care about the other person. So we might need to do more of these. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to check back in Thursday for our next topic. And don't forget to check that subscribe button below to be sure to get notified of the latest podcast right away. Hit that notification bell as well. And if you have any questions or concerns about your leather binder, journal, folio, accessory, anything we sell, please feel free to contact the main page or our website at murdycreative.co. Or you can contact us via Instagram and Facebook. You can text, email, call, direct message, all the usuals. We'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. We do appreciate your patience. If you do want to give us a phone call or a text message, you can send it to 414-434-9001. Uh, we're available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. Uh, we don't work federal holidays, so if you get the voicemail on a federal holiday, just know that we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. If you don't get a hold of us at any time, after hours, during hours, and we go to voicemail, please do leave us a voicemail. We do return voicemails. It does help us. Um, so definitely do that if you'd like. Once again, that's 414-434-9001. You can call or text that number. If you think we deserve it, a good review can go a long way to help us grow. Both a review on the podcast app, whatever you're listening on, but also a review on the product if you have one. Go to murdercreative.co slash reviews to read all of our amazing five-star reviews. There's two buttons there. One of them says leave a good review. If you click on that, it'll take you to facebook.com slash murdercreative.co slash reviews. It'll say, do you recommend the Murdy Creative Company? You click yes, and you can write your amazing review. We love them. We read them. I read them out loud to the team almost always. We're putting up on the wall in the new workshop. It's going to be great. If, however, you would leave us a bad review, there's another button there that says get in contact with us. You click on that button, it'll get you directly in contact with us and give us an opportunity to make it right. It's very important to me personally that everyone has a good experience with the company. They love their product, they enjoy the experience of purchasing, and so we will do whatever we can, whatever it takes to make it right, no matter whatever the problem is. Recrafting, refund, anything. Give us an opportunity before you leave us a bad review to make it right, and we will. If uh, you really want to help us out as well, grow them, grow, word of mouth is the best form of communication. It's the best form of advertising I could possibly ever get. So tell your friends, tell your family, tell your enemies. And uh, there's a little button at the bottom left-hand corner of the website. You click on that and you sign in. You get 5% back on any purchase you make as in-store credit. But more importantly, there's a shareable link in the bottom there. When you share that link with your friends and family and enemies, they get $5 off their first purchase. You get $5 of in-store credit. And it helps us grow a customer base. So definitely share and share and it helps us. So definitely do that and we'll help you. If you have any podcast topics you want to hear more about, send them my way. I'm always happy to engage with our growing community and I want to give you guys what you're looking for. So ask away and I'll do my best to answer. If you're looking for multiple binders, journals, folios, anything we sell for gifts, giveaways, menus, really any reason, uh, be sure to add whatever quantity you want into the cart and an automatic bulk discount will be applied for that appropriate quantity. It's just based off total car quantity, so you can max, mix and match to your heart's desire. If, for whatever reason, uh, you're not exactly sure what quantity you need, but you want to get the best discount, feel free to send us an email, sales at murdycreative.co, sales at murdycreative.co, and we'll be happy to help talk you through the bulk discount program and help explain the different levels, and we can help find you that right discount for that, that quantity that you need. If you'd like to get a custom engraved item, we have no minimum order quantities and no uh, setup fees. It's just a simple flat fee of $15. It goes up a little bit depending on size and complexity, but that's rare. So it's normally $15 per item, and that's before bulk discount. So if you want to get a whole bunch of those things that are custom engraved, feel free to reach out to us, S-A-L-E-S at murdycreative.co. Uh, we'll be happy to create a free mock-up for you as well as a custom order link. You can buy just one, or you can buy a whole bunch and get that bulk discount. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day, and goodbye.